Okay, we're back. If you managed to make it through that, we uh, had a crash of the uh, studio software. I haven't seen that for many months, actually. Apologize. Anyway, um, kind of rewind just a little bit just to get a synopsis. But the uh, we're looking for a potential last hour rally right now as long as we stay above the, the, the lows that we've had for the day. And that's where the, the end of the day is setting up. So let's go ahead and and look through uh, a couple elements here and this is some I haven't spent a lot of time on in the past but it is something that we want to uh, continue to focus on as as the days unfold but we're seeing the uh, this is the daily and this is the the webs I haven't talked about but this choppy session here we're we're hovering right above the support right now and let me bring up that that number here uh, that support, that support is primarily the uh, 21 period moving average, which is, is uh, we're looking at 1959.63. So it's just above that level. Uh, I talked about in commentary last night that 1957.50. Uh, we're going to need to stay above that uh, to to keep things in in a positive mode. We have, we have actually done that so far today, so we still have a pretty good probability of some sort of recovery and rally back. I mean, we're down 253 right now, and uh, I think I'm gonna have to get my glasses on so I can see a little better. Um, but yeah, so the, uh, yeah, we're down uh, 255 right now at 1962. So as we go through the, some of the, uh, the other elements here, and let's take a look at, let me get um, this full screen. I'm also going to take the models off just for a second here, just so we don't need all the buy and sells. This is the uh, daily S&P uh, cash graph. So now we're back into uh, the cash. And we're seeing the PPMs. This was uh, actually very similar on Monday, as I recall. That They're pretty flat. They're in this, this little flat line. They're trying to improve just a little bit. Yesterday's decline didn't destroy any of the relative strength that is out there from the standpoint of, of momentum. And so we're, we're seeing this thing continuing on in this little sideways band. So this, this is the pattern that, uh, uh, that we've, been, we've been seeing for a while actually. And this is the way this, this market works. And um, I know there's a, when you're trading at historical highs, I guess every day is an anxiety point. So, uh, but but this little pattern I'm drawing a, a flat line across. We've been getting these flats, a little dip, and then we go up another flat. We trade in a range and we move up, and now we've done a, another flat range. And so far, that pattern continues to move up. As I've pointed the arrow up here, that 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 continues to be the pattern. Like I said, the PPMs almost completely flat, 0 0.90304. 0, 0, uh, PPM 1, 2, and 3, 0, 3, 4, uh, 0, 4, 0, 9. So basically flat on a daily basis. So there's really not any, uh, any uh, um, as we used to call it on trading floor, any VIG. It's just kind of flat. It's just, there's no, no momentum going on whatsoever. And um, I, I think when we when we crashed, uh, I was discussing uh, another chart here. And if I want, I'm going to go back to that graph real quick. As one of the one of the things that happened, we're, we've got the uh, VIX, uh, the volatility index, back at, at 1247. So it's increased the last couple of days. What that's done is actually not increase the uh, risk, but it actually increased the probability for the market to continue. Uh, there's been very little market movement relative to what's happened in the VIX. Uh, like I said, we're from last Friday's close. I believe, let's see, last Friday was 1985.40 was the close last week, and we're we're simply down 20 handles, which is uh, you know one good day uh, from a uh, from a standpoint of volatility. Uh, the uh, the three-day volatility has moved up closer to 14 now so we're getting a, a little better range although there uh, if I recall we're, we're seeing a bit of a, a contraction on that today again 59 to 66 yeah quite a bit so we can't seem to maintain any uh, volatility there were great hopes even on Monday's commentary when I wrote that that maybe uh, the 
the Wells Fargo that Mitch has not found. I bet he, have you found I, it? I have it. Okay, I have it. all right. <laughs> So uh, right now I can't get Mitch on screen because of the crash, but I'll try to get him back. But uh, we can hear him anyway. He'll be like a call-in guest. Um, but the um, yeah, so that the great hope was that the Wells Fargo that would be kick off the banks and the financial sector, and everybody would be hoorah, you know, let's go. And that's not what's happened. They missed the uh, earnings. So what were the earnings now that you've got them up there? Yeah. So the actual earnings, uh, I found the clarification. So. They, the reportings uh, were, were in line with, with many estimates at a uh, dollar and one cent a share. Uh, they brought in a little bit more revenue. The concern with it, though, is that they, they have yet to, uh, to be able to increase uh, earnings per share from the preceding quarter. And so that was the, the hopes was that they would be able to get a little bit more growth uh, going in the market. And this is the first time uh, in, in quite a while that they haven't been able to continually increase the, the earnings per share quarter after quarter. So it wasn't necessarily that they underperformed, but they didn't meet all the expectations that were out there. So that's why they're relatively flat for the day. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, if you look back at the last five years, you look at the bailout of the banks and all the reconfiguration of the banking system, what, you, what we have witnessed has been sort of interesting. So the, the Fed's put on all this money to get them get them healthier back and operating again. Now they're just sucking the money out through fines. I mean, uh, I think, uh, was it uh, City or somebody, like eight billion here, and then they're selling all these mortgage stuff, which I, I guess if you're dug in and you're watching the fundamentals, maybe you can see some of these uh, these actions going on by the government, but they have sucked. I, I, I need to see if we can figure it out, but if you go through all just the major banks that are out there, I bet you they've they've brought in at least 50, 50, 75, maybe a hundred million dollars, and then they then they're going after the foreign banks uh, for uh, all kinds of stuff. What UBS or one of those guys paid several billion dollars, and then there was Barclays, and the the whole thing is they bail them out. Now they get not only they got them healthy, so they're they're taking the money back. So uh, the regulatory. Uh, I guess we call it regulatory or predatory, maybe is a better word, uh, 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 from the standpoint of the DOJ and, and everybody that's just trying to, they've got all these guys healthy now, so now they're just taking money. So I'm, it doesn't surprise me that they finally get a flat quarter and that they've been just sucked dry from all of these, these actions. I'm, I'm not even sure, having not a lot of knowledge other than seeing the numbers come out, that maybe it's not appropriate, but it, it just seems like Seems like they got them healthy now. Let's find out every way we can, and anytime they do something wrong, we punish them and take take the money. I guess uh, I was I figured out that the one of the one of the settlements the other day will will keep the, uh, the our new uh, citizens coming in over the border. Uh, the 3.6 billion dollars they need to do that. Uh, I guess I'm thinking they could send them all home with a million dollars and be a lot cheaper. They could go back home to their countries and solve their poverty issue immediately in another country. But it's just uh, there. It's just the whole concept of taking this money from the banks uh, appears to be. Uh, I don't know. It, it it feels funny to me. But that's going to flatten out the earnings. That the uh, I, I guess they wanted them to get everything healthy. It sounds good. It helped the system out. And now. Now they're, they're taking every time they get a chance, they've got another lawsuit, another issue. And like I said, I, I don't know enough about it. Maybe it's appropriate, but it, it, the timing seems interesting to me. Uh, if they would have done, I guess if they would have done all this in the beginning, then there would be no banking system. We'd only have Bitcoins or something. Anyway, so, um, anyway, so let's um, take a look at the weekly charts here um, and take a look at what Matter of fact, let me switch charts off of here. Let me go over to this graph here. This will be a much better graph to look at. So let's go to weekly. And the the weekly is um, is continuing to show some momentum. And, and, and I mentioned, I, I believe, briefly in the commentary that the momentum is being lost, but it's still pretty robust. So we have uh, PPM 1.42, PPM 2 and 3 is 0.31 and 0.38. So the the longest term average is almost rising at the highest level. And this, this is a sign that we're possibly going to 
complete this sequence that we're in and maybe I, I talked about this configuration that we've seen at 1600, 17, 18, 19 and now 2000 uh, we got to 1985 maybe that's close enough to the number where we start to get this gyration where we start to see some some choppy action before we can get through the 2000 if you recall uh, there's a, a new objective on a daily right now of 2000.35 as a min and the uh, extreme range is 2015 to 2025 so uh, that's the minimum there's still the intermediate objectives of 2034 and then 2072 I believe it is going off the top of my head uh, but those those are numbers that we're still looking at it's another um, three to five percent range on the upside like I said these numbers look big now because to move index one uh, percent uh, is a lot you know it's 19 handles so that, that's a big number and that's why yesterday actually probably felt more dramatic than it is just because of the, the numbers because of the the level the market's at so from a percentage standpoint it it's still still the same kind of reaction that we've seen in the past but it, it feels like more because the numbers look bigger and um, but anyway yeah so th those are the objectives that we're looking at on the upside as we're looking at you know at this 2000 just over 2000 like I said it just depends on how this thing finishes today right now we're we're just waffling around and it looks like we could get a recovery maybe finish unchanged or higher on the days uh, right now the probabilities are still slanted because as long as it stays over 1957.50 there's still a 60 percent probability that the market will close higher doesn't mean it will but there is a the probabilities are stacked that way so um, let's go and look at uh, the monthly as this month is unfold to do the the final view of, of, of this section the um, the monthlies still very robust trends here uh, we're looking at 1.53 155 and 105 and I touched on this on Monday just to kind of recap that if you didn't see that show the we're finally seeing the very very first signs that this market is starting to get towards the final part of this particular sequence which is the PPM one is not going as fast as PPM two so the the short-term trend is not expanding and this is going to have to go probably under uh, I'm going to say 115 but probably under 1% uh, per month uh, so if the market stays flat and it's going to take a couple months for this uh, to show up but once the 21 period moving average or PPM2 is is advancing you'll see that the two moving average will, will contract and get closer together very first sign first thing that has to happen when the end of the trend is happening so we're uh, they're basically running at the same level right now so the the trend isn't expanding but it's maintaining and that's the number I'll be watching here over the next several weeks depending on the prices it's literally that's this is an August September story that I'm talking about it's not it's not going to show up we're going to need at least two months of activity and there would have to be some downside or continuing sideways movement from a from a price close standpoint last month let's see here where we close real quick to give you just a touch more perspective on that on that idea that is uh, the close was 1960 so we're really we're at 60 61 46 we're at the, we're we're at last trading at last month's closing uh, so we've been up uh, up to 85 and uh, let's see do we have the range here yeah the low has been 1915 and that was, that was last month so this month the range has been uh, 5286 which was yesterday's low and 8559 so we have a, a about a what a 30 32 33 handle range for the month so far so it's the uh, it's the 11th so we have time <laughs> there's lots of month to unfold here yet so uh, but that's where it is right now and uh, but basically we're closing at uh, we're trading at last month's level so there's not going to be and this chart that I'm showing you right now the PPMs are actually being updated real time so they're based on the last close so you're not going to on this particular chart it's going to take a lot more to move these numbers a little bit but we have seen this this market uh, or this momentum come down and you know just not that long ago 
it was uh, well, really not that much difference. And we're on one. Here, here we go over to the peak over here early as 161 or so. So not not a, not a big deal, but the trends are maintaining uh, from the standpoint of of this uh, this trend in this wave three that I talked about on Monday. And when this is done, and we should see a fairly large corrective phase, which is a a 12 to 16 month event, I believe. And the downside will probably finally get our 10% correction. I still think it comes after we've reached some of these higher numbers that we've talked about for some time as 20, 20, uh, 2032, 2072. But we're really close. And, and, and it's interesting because we have seen quite a bit of traction in, in the database where we've gotten back up into, uh, uh, from I guess a non-optimized view, up to 70, 71% of the symbols. Uh, close to 71%. So that is pretty robust, but that's also about as far as that goes. 68 to about 74 is a typical place where that stops. And then what you see is the market's trading. Uh, some of these stocks are going to continue to go on. Most of these were, were stock trades that come in, although we did see quite a bit of uh, mutual fund stuff come in. I think we saw, well, do you recall, Mitch, um, what was the rotation that we saw over the last several weeks? was was it mostly mutual funds? We saw that some of the short cap, uh, short term, short term, uh, small caps come in, and some of that's that rotation. Yeah, it's it's been largely mutual funds catching up. Uh, I'm pulling up the raw data on my end, uh, so just give me a second. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, we've had about six thousand net buys, I think, in the last month. Uh, so we've had quite a bit of, of movement, to say the least. And uh, yeah, give me a couple minutes. I can okay. Tell you what that yeah, yeah, come back in when you get that. Um, yeah, so anyway, but these trends are, are still there. And what, what typically will happen is there's some portion of those trades that came on just aren't going to work. They probably won't be disastrous uh, trades, but they, they're just going to waffle sideways and not really bring in a lot of, uh, of I guess, um, from a trade impact. They're not going to have a, a lot of impact one way or the other on, on the portfolios. They end up to be pie filler, but one of the things that has happened, which is really, really good, uh, talking about uh, from the from the standpoint of what happens within VPM when we get all these cells, it's forced all of, most of the portfolios, and I would say uh, possibly almost all of them, to, depending on your settings, if you have a, a the setup properly, to go through what I would call a. Uh, uh, it forced these rebalancing trades to happen. So two things happen. There's trades that we've had on for a while. They get scaled back. So you've lowered the risk on open trades and then you've redistributed risk and you get into uh, VPM at this particular time. There's three basic phases where you have a uh, lot of capital and you get fully invested. And then the next phase is where we are now is where you get fully diversified and you start to see these rebalancing orders. And the rebalancing orders uh, I think we went through this the other day, but it's worth a, a quick mention, is that the rebalancing orders cause two things to happen. One, uh, trades that have been working for a while, it causes those to get scaled back and it lowers the relative risk on the whole, continuing holding trades that are working. And then it redistributes that money into new ideas. And some of those will work and some won't, but they really, it changes the entire risk profile from a portfolio standpoint. And uh, you know, we are the virtual portfolio manager. Uh, a lot of times we get caught on being the individual stock manager and people look at the trees and not at the overall process. And the overall process uh, from a portfolio standpoint, you know, the, the dynamics that are constantly unfolding there are, are way, way more important than some of the individual uh, trades, whether this one worked or that one worked and all that stuff. It, it focus in on, the intricate parts of the portfolio don't really tell you what that portfolio is doing necessarily. And that's why if you go to our main site and at least look at the premieres, we have the, uh, the trade impact charts. You can see that a lot of these trades have little or no impact, but they, you don't know, this is the problem, is you don't know which one's going to work. And uh, you can't, you've got to do them all, you've got to have them all on. Because uh, we've talked about it, I don't know how many times, but in, uh, and Global Equity 4, uh, EEM is the major player in, in returns on that particular strategy. And without EEM, it's not even the same. So 
uh, the global part of that is being generated an awful lot of it by the uh, uh, the returns that are coming out of the EEM and it's on a daily basis so it's a little more aggressive there's a few more trades on that per year but overall the the overall portfolio runs on uh, on a typical basis as the old ETFDI uh, original build. Uh, what happens though is EEM does has this effect when it comes in to trigger a rebalance and that rebalance has those effects that I just discussed and that that's really positive. So uh, so with our little downtime here Mitch, um, I'm going to have to just listen to you talk uh, but uh, why don't we go ahead and start uh, to dig into some of the stocks that we're going to look at today. Let's go ahead and pull up Wells Fargo since we talked about it. How about uh, WFC? That's right. I was not WF, is it? WFC. Yeah, and we're currently optimized on the 3.2 weekly, and we are along that. Okay. Let me bring that up real quick. There we go. We've been along it for a while, it looks like. Oh, this, yes. is, mo no, this is monthly. So hang on. Hang on, folks. All right. Hold the phone. Uh, yeah, so here we go. But. Yeah, this is another one of those trades, one of my favorite trades. We got in and uh, was it the following week? It looks like it was. We got back in this trade again. So there was risk showed up. Market, uh, uh, we, we got an exit signal the following week. We got right back in. So let's see here. What was the exit there? 40, yeah, we bought, we sold at 41.14, uh, bought the next uh, Monday at 42.64. So, uh, yeah, and that that was uh, what, what's the net profit on this last trade? Uh, currently, we are up uh, as of yesterday twenty one point five percent. Okay. And as far as the prior trade, let me. So see if that. you had a five percent allocation, that's a one percent trade impact on your portfolio. So definitely worth uh, worth having on and. I said, uh, matter of fact, this whole thing, uh, and typically what happens when we go through these stocks, it triggers me into uh, uh, talking about how, how, how this thing works and how, what VPM's doing with this thing. And here's a, a pretty good illustration of, um, of how it worked. There was no trade in this first arrows I put over in the left. Am I in the way? No, I'm not. Um, and then we get a trade, which is pretty much a flat trade. We're out, we paid up again, and we got this next trade. Can you look at the previous trade to the one that we're in? What was the net profit on that? Yeah, prior to this, we sold with a gain of 16%. Okay, so we got 16, and what about the previous trade? Was that a bust or? No, it was uh, another gain of 11%. Okay, so it, uh, it it's hard to tell looking across this graph here. So we got 11, 16, and now we're working on what, 21? 21 and a half, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, I don't know what the overall chart is, but we've been participating for the bulk of this. And the, uh, uh, the goals, as I've, I've talked about many times, of what uh, VPM's doing is trying to capture that 60, 80% of these, of these ranges. And I, uh, we missed out on that first section uh, when it figured out the trends, and it's, been, it's had three trades over the last uh, two years. So... Not in and out, not in and out, not uh, overly active, but active at the, uh, the right points in time, we'll say. So uh, what do we got next? And let's see, what are they doing here? We're down 0.56 on the miss. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, just going back to your, your comment about the rotation within the database. I mean, we've seen significant buying since June in the large cap, the financial sector. Uh, mid-cap funds, as well as um, you know the, the blends, large blends, mid mid-cap growth, and, and small blend. Those are probably where we've seen the largest uh, activity since June, uh, week by week by week. Yeah, and and uh, and if you think about this, folks, when uh, we had the biggest correction both in mid-cap and large cap, I'm sorry, mid-cap and small cap, and that's where the rotation has occurred from that standpoint. And a lot of the stocks that you have going on and uh, are also there. Uh, some stage, I guess since it's summer and uh, we may just do a, a more focused broadcast after we do this. We may, we may spend a whole 
uh, half hour or so uh, on a show maybe next week because it's uh, on my mind. I, I mentioned, I believe on Monday, there's some things cooking in the background with me and uh, I've been looking at the small caps, been looking at the, the structure of the markets and things and I we might end up doing a whole sh uh, half a show anyway talking about what's going on in the leverage and that's showing up in the small cap companies and why it's occurred. So well, I'll save that, so I'll drop that seed and I'll, I'll make sure that we, uh, we touch on that next week. So remember, Market Thunder will be Monday and Friday, summer hours. Um, maybe we should do Monday and uh, Thursday. I wish I played golf. Can I go play golf on Friday? But uh, I, I don't, so uh, I live and on- neither of us are golfers. So yeah, and I, and I live on a golf course. I live in a community that's a golf course. And uh, Arnold Palmer designed it, but I, all I would do is hit all my neighbors' houses with little white balls, so it's, <laughs> it's not worth playing. Uh, I'm actually, I'm more of a three putt guy than than the uh, I can. I actually can't tee them up pretty good on most of the time. But uh, anyway, I'm just not a, not a player there. Um, but the the uh, you know, let's go ahead to the next stock here and see what we got. All right, let's, let's talk about Alcoa. Uh, they kicked off the earnings season earlier this week. Uh, we didn't have a broadcast on Tuesday, so uh, let's take a look and see how they're doing. Ticker is AA. Got it. And uh, they are also on the 3.2 weekly. Okay. And has that thing just been long forever? Uh, let me take a look. Uh, we've been long since uh, December of, of 2012. Yeah. So, yeah. 12-21-12. 78% gain. Yeah. So, interesting, folks. Uh, take a look at this. Um, Matter of fact, uh, there were some news stories. I haven't looked. Maybe we should bring up my my favorite uh, deal. We actually didn't talk about treasuries because of the disruption and flow of uh, of the show with the crash. But the bottom line is um, this is a classic pattern where it's a elongated base that occurs, and then we see this up. So um, I can't imagine. Um, I, I don't know how many how many people would have this thing on uh, on their um, in their portfolio but you know you're looking at um, months and months of sideways with no activity all of a sudden this thing takes off so one of the things that will typically happen in a stock like this is you not only, you'll get um, this stock will come up somewhere in this elongated period from uh, you know on a screen or something Maybe it's a value. I mean, this is this probably could have shown up on a value value graph. I'm not sure what the the stats are, but this stock has went from eight to uh, sixteen, and it was one of the big players on uh, Monday morning. We we got I I say we sorry, Mitch. I got uh, tied into uh, going through the steals and all the the whole scenario that happened back in the, the early 2000s, and this is part of that that basic material boom if we went back further maybe we'll take a look at this but this pattern is a classic where you get this long base and then finally you see the trend and if you look at the ppms uh, we're finally getting at that stage as well on this although that this includes today's boost we're up one 1.6 percent is that for today i guess it is huh yeah so that they didn't care much for two days ago now they care and that's okay but then you, we've got the, uh, uh, you know, we've got the big momentum burst, and we're actually seeing an increase in momentum on the weekly basis. So we got one, 153, 163, and 171 on the PPM one, two, and three, and this is pretty, pretty strong numbers actually. So we're we're going to look at um, uh, a continuation of this trend. There are no current Fibonacci projections. Uh, Mitch, by chance, can you uh, see what our projections were on, on uh, from a statistical standpoint and trade profile? Uh, I suspect we possibly have exceeded that, but that's a guess. Uh, let me see here. 240 is what I show. Oh, hold on. Let me pull up the right stock. That might help. Trying. I'll scoop, pulling up a Nike F for the next one. Yeah. Uh, trade profile is uh, 183. 183. Uh, the average. 183 percent. Yep. Wow, that's pretty big. So we're way under. Um, what's the duration, and where are we? Let's see here. Um, average durations. Uh, plan on holding this until well, 
we're long past the the average. Uh, September 11th of 2013 is when we expected. Uh, the longest that we've ever held it prior to this would have put us in uh, December of well, it would put us at December of this year. Okay, December yeah, 31st. I'm, I'm trying to log in to uh, BPM at the moment, and I'm I'm not doing that good of job actually. Uh, thought I was already logged in but yes yeah, so I'll bring this up so if I'm bringing up a point I can actually I can actually show you on this um, of course I'm going to have to log into 2.0 I think now unless yep yeah. bear with me folks I'll be uh, all the way up to speed here in a minute yay finally in and uh, go over to research and we'll go ahead and put in uh, been so long I forgot what symbol we're looking at the uh, AA, AA Alcoa. Alcoa there you go yeah, average duration on this is 188 days so as I said that would have put us back in, in September last year yeah and so um, I guess this is uh, more of a uh, a classic here now I've got uh, one twos coming up does that get re-optimized maybe I think it did so you had I had three two on it before yep. uh, maybe you didn't tell me it was on one two uh, I'll have to double check the, the data on this uh, yeah because uh, 9 16 uh, 13 was the place where we bought this uh, uh, the uh, current P&L is 94.3% uh, and uh, the uh, trade profile on this puppy let's go over there and take a look at that uh, is uh, we're in a hold uh, we've exceeded uh, yeah so we're here's the expectation here for uh, uh, April 22nd on this trade to be there we're We've exceeded both the uh, profit mean, um, which was 16%. What stock were you looking at? Uh, that, I was pulling up a, a stock underneath Nike, so that's that was the confusion on that one. So, uh, so yeah, so that. let's get the real stats here. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so 16.99, not 187. Uh, but the uh, – um, are you an expert? Is that why you I did that? I was an expert. That's so why, that's what, that's why that you did that. Issue. Yeah, so uh, – right. Yeah, so on the uh, on on the screen here, we've got um, uh, we're, we're looking at the standard deviation of uh, thirty one point six six three. So we've way exceeded everything that this thing normally does. That's why I didn't think this stock had that big of a range. I thought it was a, a much smaller because AA is not this big momentum stock. It's uh, pretty much the uh, I guess yeah, somehow I guess because they're AA, they get stuck. Uh, being the first uh, earnings, so they, they've got to be the first one out of the shoot every every quarter. But the bottom line is that it's exceeded everything, and the holding period is in a hold. Uh, I guess our longest that we have is 336 days. I have no idea what Mitch said it was, since it was the wrong stock. I guess it doesn't matter. So my st I'm going to have to uh, uh, look into my statistician in the background yeah. here. Uh, trying to do too much at once, trying to listen to you and, uh, and also do research, I guess, is what yeah, I get for that. Yeah, yeah, so, always, anyway. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Um, so, let's go ahead and go back to Trade Station. Let's do the next stock, and we're down to uh, uh, last 12 minutes or so here in the show. All right, next stock, uh, let's pull up Nike and KE. And the, what model is this one on? Well, I have it down as, as 3.2 weekly. I'm going to double check and make sure that 2.0 agrees with that. Right. Looks like uh, I'm it is 3.2, 3.2 weekly. So we're currently along this position as of uh, June 9th. Yeah, I've got the stats up on the page now. You've made me uh, skittish on uh, <laughs> trusting your, your background uh, there. Uh, yeah, so we're we're up what uh, one percent. Yeah, that's what it looks like. One percent. Yep. yep. And 
projected profit is a gain of 48 percent okay so we've got a ways to go uh from the uh, standpoint of looking at this pattern here this is a uh, somewhat a classic and let's see if i can bring this thing up on uh yeah so here, here's the same trades let me uh let me bring up a whiteboard real quick and i'll just talk about these trades and uh if you had this stock in your screen um if you look back from th this actually once again another lesson in uh, vpm and how it, understanding where it's trades so we got out over here way over in july of 12. we got back in over here uh, of course we paid up a little bit to get back in and then we made the profit from where I'm putting the arrow here um, and and then so we had a pretty good profit there but if you look uh, someone might look at this price here well why did it take so long to get in and the reality is this entire I don't think I have a tool that I can draw this out how I'd like to so I'm just going to try to attempt to circle it this area right here where I just drew the circle it was under the moving averages uh, while the PPMs down below here were starting to show increases there were no no trending cap, uh, characteristics in that particular uh, pattern and finally it broke out over here and then we started to then then VPM came in and if you recall one of VPM's goals in a way that works is it's always looking at a a point of what is the uh, the point of entry that's going to bring the least amount of adverse excursion and adverse excursion is how much does it go against me before it goes for me and uh, in this case here it bought it looks like there was one week and then it started to stair step in this in this trend on its on its way up and then ultimately uh, made a gain of the last trade and then we saw it looked like the the market was going to uh, the stock was going to break out and start to run we got a purchase here and it went sideways for two to three weeks and then failed dropped back below the averages momentum down here was was failing as well and and so now um, we have no position is that right no no we, we're currently along the position are we not on this one hang on um, and we're up one uh, percent in it got in on oh that's June right 9th. yeah June 9th okay yeah so I'm not sure and what what version was that that was on there I'm three two huh okay so usually this should match up pretty well I'll have to look into that I'm, I'm not sure I don't see the trade there on June 9th that's interesting anyway so we go over to VPM uh, We'll see it here. There's there's the trade that we're talking about up one one percent on that. Seventy six was the entry. Seventy six eighty six with expectations. What did we say the expectation was on this? Uh, let me pull that back up. I believe it's around forty eight percent. Forty eight point zero seven six percent. Okay. And what's that price? Uh, one twelve six seventy one. Okay. So I guess they'd be making some shoes. Uh -huh. Uh, but yeah, so uh, so that's the expectation for the stock. Nothing really stands out uh, from from my viewpoint, other than looking at how uh, you know this this breakout happened and, and a failure, and then and then coming back there. So um, all right, uh, let's see here. Let's let's do one thing. We've got about eight minutes. I'm going to switch completely off the stocks, and I want to go back to uh, a couple of things we didn't talk about because there's. Some things to talk about there which is the the treasury market and if you recall we we talked about the uh, um, that 265 level we got up to two uh, let's see here what was the range this week we got 263 yeah 263.6 this week and now we're all the way back at at 251 so there just continues to be a, a steady flow of money back into these treasuries. I talked about on Monday, we were right at the edge if we could have held this thing together at possibly seeing some increase in, in the rates, but uh, that's that's off the table at the moment as uh, momentum is minus 31, minus 42, and minus 13. So 
we're just not going to get through those numbers and let me bring that up and, and talk a little bit here about that is the uh, I guess I don't have it on the right place here we go um, yeah you're looking at right now the the averages are yeah, there we go. Two, 228, two, uh, these are the targets. Where are the averages? Why aren't the averages showing up here? There they are. No. That's really strange. It like won't toggle down to what I need it to be at. Should be showing my moving averages here and I'm not seeing them. Um, oh, there they are they're, because they're buried. It's 256.50 now. Two, 63.2 so we got uh, up to the 263.6 number we reverse off that number and then the, the longer average is 269.40 and uh, just these colors it's almost impossible to see um, need to work on that uh, but the the bottom line is we got right up to resistance again it failed and the interest rates continue to to stay low and it really, uh, I guess maybe it was a geopolitical thing that's going on. It, it's hard to say what, what drove money back in there, but there does continue to be this incredibly crazy appetite for treasuries. And I, I forget, I know that there was a $30 billion auction of like five-year paper. Uh, I bet you they threw another $100 billion out there this week of new money. And this thing was still, it just got absorbed and then some. So it's pretty, pretty amazing that, uh, the amount of money that's on the planet and I guess the amount of money that is being run into these these treasuries as as things go on um, what my I'm gonna bring this up this may not be the best but let me bring up another symbol here because I haven't talked about this for a while my FXY which is the Japanese trust Did I not do it FXY Nice. We won't change symbols. This has been a fun show today. This has been a really. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's the end of the week. I guess it's supposed to be like this. I'm not sure. Um, let me just see here. Let's try changing changing something here and try it again. At least give me a bad symbol. There it goes. That's funny. It's, I've noticed that glitch. It must be this new version. I updated the software just the other day love those updates right okay here we go so we're we're looking at at 96.22 this pattern in this in this yen is continuing this sideways mode and it reminds me when we were looking at the uh, uh, the Alcoa chart a little bit ago where it went long long term I still expect to see this thing go matter of fact that was the other backstory uh, that also not only did the uh, Portugal banks have an issue, but there was a, it was funny because it was only about a half percent uh, down on the dollar. The yen was up about a half a percent against the dollar, and it was uh, managed to make a news story that somebody was going, ah, that's what, that's what happened. See, it's, it's sort of like everybody's on a witch hunt of some sort when they're trying to figure out why these markets are making these moves and, and are, you know, are moving around. There, there always has to be a reason. It, and uh, my favorite reason is there was more buyers and sellers or more sellers and buyers and that's usually what moves prices and whether there was an actual stimulus for those there sometimes there is a reason for all these things that happen sometimes it's just a general appetite for these things and uh, the yen certainly hasn't uh, had a lot to do with uh, uh, from that standpoint Alrighty, so I, I guess to finish off the show, we're down to about a minute and a half here. So the uh, overall, what we're looking at here, folks, is just a uh, uh, when we're looking at at, at the uh, the U.S. markets is just really a consolidation that's set up. Like I said we we could see. Uh, if we we're only down 173 while we're talking now, so the market keeps coming back. Expectation 
uh, look for a last hour rally unless we rally now into the last hour then we could see uh, sideways to, to downward so going going off of those um, patterns and this was something ah this is something else I didn't touch on so very quickly in my last minute we didn't bring up the international charts and this is the EFA and we did see finally the uh, um, this here the uh, EEM actually started to gain a little bit at least there's a little uptick and no real sustained move yet but we saw some monies moving around the other day when the when the US market backed up you saw these spreads actually improve a little bit and then uh, let's take a, one last look at this uh, this cycle I was talking about earlier here's the five minute cycle um, uh, yeah it's going to be uh, really close to probably the last hour maybe last hour and a half for this cycle is going to hit and it should be if it rally if it stays in this range it'll, it should be a low if it rallies too much and we actually made a new high in the day then it could be kind of a climactic uh, point in the day and we see some backfilling so look for right now I'm still expecting a higher close and uh, and we'll see how it all plays out unless we can uh, we'd have to break through some of these numbers down here it doesn't look to be very much activity in, in the markets uh, at the moment anyway uh, if I go just a uh, the short term chart to one minute you can see it's rallying up so my time is up um, it was a uh, it was a fun show today we had uh, some challenges <laughs> and uh, uh, lost a lot of stuff but we I think we got through it so anyway folks have a great weekend we shall see you on Monday and uh, we'll we'll talk to you then have a great great day <laughs>